This segment is sponsored by Center for Family Safety and Healing. It's a tough subject to talk about, but it does need to be talked about. What should you do if you know someone experienced domestic violence? We're turning to an expert for the answers here. She's Kara Penniman. She is the Adult Services Clinical Manager with the Center for Family Safety and Healing. Kara, thank you for being here. Thanks, Sean, for having me. You're right. It's such an important subject. And I'm sure there are, unfortunately, friends and family out there that want to know what to do. What are some of the signs that someone might be in an abusive relationship and what might they see or hear? You're right. This is just a really difficult topic, but it's also super important. It can be very hard to identify um, domestic violence from the outside. So many people um, who choose to be violent act very different around friends and family. Um, I think that it's most important to know that domestic violence doesn't just involve physical abuse. Abuse can be physical, but it also can be emotional, financial, sexual, or threats as well. Mm -hmm. so one of the things that friends or family might notice <clears throat> is um, increased isolation, maybe canceling plans um, a lot. You might see unexplained injuries, a controlling or jealous uh, partner, maybe harassing calls, and also something that we call coded disclosures, where someone might say something like, she doesn't like it when I talk to female coworkers, or he watches everything I spend or do. So it can really be difficult to know for certain. Um, this is especially true during the pandemic, where connection with friends and family and neighbors is really limited, but it's really worth risking being wrong by asking. So what do we do, though, for people watching at home right now? What can they do if someone is maybe in an abusive relationship they suspect? How can they offer helpful support? I mean, really, I feel like friends, family, neighbors, coworkers are the frontline workers in the domestic violence movement because most people go to those folks first. So it's really critical how we respond. It's important to have positive response, and that helps people continue to open up more in the future. So we often talk about wanting to start by believing. Um, that means being non-judgmental and being patient that many people aren't necessarily ready to acknowledge that they're experiencing abuse. So the most important things are to tell you, to tell the person that you're concerned about them and concerned about their safety. Let them know that they don't um, deserve to be treated that way or to experience abuse. Let them know that the partner is responsible for their own behavior and that they don't have to go this alone, that there is help. You know, I think a knee-jerk reaction for many people, and they're doing it with good intent, is they might say, you need to get out of there. You need to leave. Why isn't that a good thing to do? Yeah, that's such a great question. And as an advocate, we hear this a lot. Um, we characterize, why don't you just leave, um, as a negative response. Hmm. What victims know what the public doesn't often know, which is that leaving is really the most dangerous time. And in studies of domestic violence homicides, leaving is actually increasing the dangerousness of the situation. So although it's well-intentioned to say just leave, it can feel really blaming. Um, often victims feel like they're not understood when someone responds that way. Hmm. There's also a lot of barriers to leaving that we might not realize from the outside. And those things could include threats to kill um, the person or their children, lack of financial resources or housing, or just really um, this desire to keep the family intact. Okay. So for people watching too, let's do this. There's so much we could unwrap and it's a very serious topic. Where can people go for resources and to learn more? You're right, there's just a lot of information out there. I think that um, you can find things online, especially um, at our website at familysafetyandhealing.org. We also have wheresthelineinfo um, where you can learn more about our call, text and chat services where if you're a bystander and you sort of need advice and are not exactly sure you're witnessing abuse, that's one place to go. In Franklin County, I definitely wanna mention that we have a local hotline and shelter that's LSS Choices. And so that's important to reach out. There's national hotlines at thehotline.org. And there are also specific organizations that address cultural needs of specific populations in our county. Our program you'll find um, at familysafetyandhealing.org or at the Center for Family Safety and Healing through Nationwide Children's Hospital. And you can call us at the number below. All right, Kara, thank you so much for all this incredible conversation. And hopefully we've enlightened some people and gotten them the help they need. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sean, for having me. 
and there are ways that you can help. And you can follow up with the Center for Family Safety and Healing, that number again, 614-722-8200.